mean Pluto's not a planet? I distinctly remember learning my very eager mother just served us nine porcupines. Nachos? That doesn't make any sense. I'm an electrical engineer, not a mathematician. And sometimes, whenever I was in my math classes, I thought, wow, you mathematicians are really serious about proving things are true or false, right? Well, it turns out that my designs as an engineer are built upon the, the theorems, the, the, the things that have been proven true in mathematics. So even if I'm working with some theorems that seem pretty simple, but there's a crack in that particular theorem, something for which it doesn't work correctly, my design, the foundation of my design, is going to fall apart and my design is going to have problems, bugs, so to speak. What does this have to do with computing? Well, every single program we write is based on algorithms. They may be really simple algorithms, but they're based on algorithms. And if we have a problem with one of those algorithms, they haven't been proved true for all cases that we're going to use, including cases we may not even know exist, if there's a problem, we're going to have a bug in our code. So let's get back to Pluto. When I was back in school, I was taught that Pluto was a planet. Well, it turns out that in 2006, the International Astronomy or Astronomical Union, the uh, IAU, said that there are three requirements in order to be a planet. The first thing is, is it has to orbit the sun. The second thing is that it's got to have sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium. Turns out that just means it's got enough mass to create enough gravity so it sucks itself into a sphere. So it's spherical, right? And then the third thing is that it has cleared the neighborhood of all objects in its orbit. Well, turns out that these things are called declarative, or they're, they're, they are declarative statements referred to as propositions. All right. Now, what is a proposition? A proposition is something that is either true or false, but cannot be both. So each one of those, in fact, let's go ahead and write these down. Orbits, sun, right? Um, is a sphere. And, and that's a really simplified version of what their rule was, you know, about that equilibrium, whatever, whatever, <laughs> right? It's got enough mass so that it's got the gravity to create a sphere out of it. And the third thing is that it has cleared its orbit, right? Now, each one of these is referred to as a proposition. It is either true or false. Now, in math, in like algebra, we're used to representing variables with things like x, y, and z. Well, when it comes to these propositions, we are going to use the letters p, q, r, s if we need it. But those are, that's the range of letters that we're going to use to identify these propositions. Well, whenever it comes to Pluto, it orbits the sun. Yep, it does it in kind of a goofy way. It does it at a 17 degree angle off of everybody else. It's got to be different, but it does in fact orbit the sun. So this is a true proposition. Is it a sphere? Yes, it has enough mass so that it is able to assume a spherical shape. Has it cleared its orbit? Turns out there's something in its orbit. Its orbit has Neptune in the way. And the fact that Pluto hasn't actually cleared it, it hasn't actually sucked in new, uh, Neptune in order to clear its orbit is the reason why it is no longer considered a planet. So this is false. Now, something else that I want to look at with these guys. These guys are, or could also be considered what we call uh, atomic propositions. Now, an atomic proposition means that it cannot be broken down into any simpler statements. For example, orbits the sun. It either does or it doesn't. It doesn't require like two or three other propositions. It can't be broken down into other propositions. Is it spherical? Does it have enough mass to create a sphere? Yes, that's correct. It can't break down that proposition anymore. Cleared its orbit could be considered not an atomic proposition because you could say something along the lines of, has it cleared it of this particular object? Has it cleared it of this particular object? And you could kind of break it down into a bunch of requirements. But in general, these are kind of what we would refer to as an atomic uh, proposition. You know, to give you an idea of some at atomic propositions, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Is that 
a declarative statement? Well, it looks a little weird. We know that 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 5, but that statement in itself can be declared as true or false. So it turns out that that is, in fact, a declarative statement and therefore a proposition. Uh, how about, are you home? This is not a declarative statement. And the reason it is not a declarative statement is because it is actually a question. So think about it this way. We are not talking about questions. These, these could be construed as questions like, does Pluto orbit the sun or is Pluto a sphere and so forth. But those are not what we were talking about here. Those are all questions. So this would not be considered a declarative statement. Um, something like, come here. Well, turns out that's not a declarative statement either. That is a command, all right? So, hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about declarative statements. Now, this brings us to another topic called a compound proposition. Now, a compound proposition is what we're using in order to define whether Pluto is a planet. And what we're saying is, if P is true, and Q is true, and R is true, all right? This is a compound proposition. Pluto orbits the sun, and Pluto is a sphere, and it has cleared its orbit. Now, it turns out, since this is true and true and false, then this compound statement itself is false. But let's add another proposition. How about we say that astronomers are Pluto haters. All right. And then we're going to put this down as S. And so what we could say is a compound statement. Pluto orbits the sun and Pluto is a sphere and Pluto is clear, has cleared its orbit or S. Astronomers are Pluto haters. All right. And the problem, there's a significant problem with this. Turns out that astronomers are Pluto haters, not a proposition. Why is it not a proposition? Because you can't answer it with a true or false. As much as I'd like for it to be a proposition, it is not a proposition because some, Pluto, some astronomers may be Pluto haters, but there are definitely some astronomers that are not. So you can't, def you can't definitively say that that is a true or false statement. So I guess I'm just going to have to get used to my very eager mother just served us nachos. That just doesn't do it for me. Let's move on to another compound proposition. Let's say that we are writing code for a phone and we're trying to determine whether a phone should be ringing whenever a phone call comes in. Well, there are some propositions that we can look at here. So for example, phone is muted. All right, that's true or false, right? Let's see, another proposition might be, I don't know, maybe you've got it set up so that, um, well, let, let's, let's talk about setup. Um, uh, phone is configured to only ring for contacts. In other words, you set it up so that only people in your contact list are allowed to have the phone ring. So this would be a configuration setting, right? Um, uh, phone call is from someone in contacts list. All right. And let's see, S. Um, maybe you also have it configured configured for um, silent mode between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. And T, a lot of these propositions here. It is between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. A -M. All right. And so these are our propositions here to determine whether or not the phone should ring. So what we're looking for is 
the phone for the phone to ring not p right it is not the phone is not muted all right and and then we're going to put this in parentheses phone is configured to only ring for contact and the phone call is from somebody in 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 your contacts or not q these things are getting pretty complicated aren't they don't worry about it we're going to have a notation to make this this note make this expression a lot simpler in a little while all right so either if the phone is configured to only ring for contacts and that person is in contacts or the phone is not configured only to ring whenever somebody's in your contact uh, and uh, let's see s and t or not s Wow, that got complicated. So what we want to do is have the phone ring only when the phone is not muted and the phone is configured only to ring whenever somebody from your contacts is calling and that person is from the contacts or the person or it's not configured to only ring for contacts. And I think I'm missing parentheses here. The phone is configured to ring, not ring during eight, you know, the, the nighttime hours and it's not Goodness, I got a lot of mistakes in here, didn't I? And it's not between the nighttime hours, or it is not configured to only ring during the nighttime hours. That's really complicated. Now in future lessons, what we're gonna do is talk about a better way to write this out and a better way to evaluate it. Look at exactly how this is operating for all of our cases. Now, one of the keys is, is that these ideas here, the, the, the ands and the ors, those are called connectives. And these knots here, those are referred to as negation. In the future lessons, not only are we going to talk about how to better represent this, but we're going to talk about how to better evaluate these using something called a truth table.